Yeah, man. Hello. My name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you fish broccoli oyster sauce. All right. So you're gonna need some cooking wine, broccoli, carrot, ginger, onion, flour, plain flour, cornstarch dried chili peppers fish fillets oyster sauce light soy sauce coconut oil for deep frying and four garlic cloves Alright, so I'm going to start by preparing these dried ingredients. Three to four garlic cloves, remove the leaves and cut the ends and grind to puree. Do the same for the ginger and grind the ginger to puree. ginger should be the size of the first bend of your finger all right as for the chili pepper cut this the stem and off the chili peppers and then cut little strips and then shred it shred fine alternatively you can buy shredded chili pepper at the groceries So I'm just using the scissors to shred the chili pepper. All right, put this aside for later. Next, all right, you can use any fish fillet. This particular species of fish is banga. All right, so it's deboned and scaled and the inside is cleaned properly it's frozen somewhat but I'm just going to prepare it as well so cut chunks about half your palm half, half the size of your palm or a little bit smaller so do as you see me doing cut fish let chunks big chunks so if you notice I put the flesh and down and cut from the skin because it's easier to cut that way all right it's frozen so I have to defrost it for a little while so the so if you got your fish and it's frozen and you need to start cooking you just first wash it with some white vinegar and water after that you just soak the fish in fresh water and just allow it to defrost Get a container with some water, add a couple drops of white vinegar. I'm now gonna rinse and wash the broccoli properly. So remove the leaves of the crown from the crown of broccoli and then cut florets. Florets is a little, there's a little crowns, there's a little crowns on top of the big crown. 
florets are the little thing that you see me cutting off yeah so you just go through and cut the florets sometimes I cut the florets with with a lot of with a stem on it with a whole lot of stem all right so once you do that just look through the broccoli leaves to see if there is any spoiling leaves and insect if so just trim that off and remove the insects So that's what you want. Just put your prepared broccoli aside for later. Alright, now I'm using a plain, clean plastic bag where you can use Ziploc or you can use a small container with a cover. A small plastic container with a cover. This is the flour that we're going to use the base to coat the fish before frying or for frying. So you had about a half cup of flour, a pinch of salt, about half a teaspoon of sea salt preferably. Alright, so this is our fish. It's been defrosting for about, about 10 minutes now. It's still frozen as you can see. Alright, so what I'm going to do is throw this water off because the water is cold and then throw fresh water on it. Alright, so throw this water off. If you're in hurry, this, I'm just showing you the method. You just throw fresh water on top of it. And then it will be ready within the next five minutes. Alright. Now, I'm going to make a, a stir fry sauce. So this is the sauce we're going to add after the fish is fried. And the seasonings are sautéed. We're going to add this sauce and stir fry the fish with the vegetables all right so add a tablespoon of food cornstarch two tablespoons of oyster sauce you can use three tablespoons if you use three it's okay we just make your gravy richer one tablespoon of light soy sauce and one tablespoon of cooking wine I should have added two cups no two tablespoons of regular water as well so you do that I didn't in this one because I forgot really so once you add the ingredients just stir it in properly and make sure it's 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 smooth stir the ingredients smooth visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe Now, these fish fillet chunks are about ready. See, it's soft. There's no ice in it whatsoever. All right, so once you do that, just do as you see me doing and put a few of the fish chunks in between the palm of your hands and give it a, a gently squeeze, removing the water. Give it a gentle squeeze, removing the water. Just enough squeeze, just to remove the water. You don't want to squeeze it like you, like you, squeezing a rag. You just want to squeeze it just enough to get out the excess water. All right. So once you do that, you lay the fish chunks. on a tray 
or a flat surface and I put them on a thick non-residue dried paper towel clean dried paper towel and then turn the flesh part of the fish down and the skin up and just allow it to drain for a little while alright now we are gonna start deep frying so put to heat a saucepan put the stove's gauge on 4 medium low a big enough saucepan where we can do some deep frying alright so while we wait for the, the water to dry out of the saucepan you now now the fish is dried enough so we can um, start flowering it base the fish with flour so take your drained dried fish fillet and then add it to the flour flour batter um, I like to just put it in a bag and then shake it up I do fried chicken the same way when I drive when I drive when I dry base fly fried chicken when I flour fried chicken this is I do it the same way so if you put it in a plastic container cover it properly and then shake the container or you can use a plastic bag like me or a ziplock it doesn't really matter all right so once you do that you take each take the fish chunks out and remove the excess flour by just shaking it and remove the excess flour and put it on a dried tray or container that way when we put it in the frying oil we don't have to wait that long we just add the fish all right and if you do it this way you're gonna add the fish like in in about two minutes don't let the fish sit down for like no more than two minutes because the, the flour will sweat in the fish and it will get moist if you know you're not gonna fry the fish same time just let it stay in the flour until about a minute or two prior frying go take a look at my cookbooks links below a Miguel Marvin Samuels production alright so it's been about a minute or two the saucepan or pot is dried so all right it's been two between three minutes after that add oil add about a cup between two cups of coconut oil you can use olive oil or vegetable oil all right so add it to the heating pan and allow Alright, so while we wait for that, let's prepare the carrot and the onion. So, lightly scrape the surface of the carrot, or slightly, lightly. And cut the ends off. This carrot broke on me, so I got two pieces, so I don't have to do the cutting. So, once you scrape the surface of the carrot off, cut the ends off the root end off and the tip all right rinse the carrot properly and cut the carrot in half but it's already broken I broke it earlier at the supermarket so cut that half in half put the flat surface on a chopping board and cut carrot sticks small carrot sticks For the onion, do the same. No, as for the onion, remove the leaf, the skin, cut the ends off, and cut the onion in quarters. And remove, separate the leaves like this.
All right, so put this aside for later. All right, so this has been about four minutes since we added the oil. The stove's gauge is on four, medium low. And you can see a little smoke. That means it's ready. So one by one, add the chicken, add the fish chunks. The flour, the fish chunk. And you see when you add the oil to the saucepan, don't let it full up no more than a quarter, a quarter way up or a third way up. Alright, once you add the flour, once you add the fit flour the fish, just allow it to fry for about a minute or two before you move. Alright, after a minute between three, the stove gauge is on four. I didn't move it at all in between the time. You just use a wooden spoon or whatever you got and gently kinda rotate the fish chunks frying in the eating oil and allow just make sure that all the fish the fish chunks are emerged under the water under the oil you want to make sure that all the fish chunks are emerged under the oil alright six minutes now since we start frying you just go through the fish chunks should be easier to handle just go through and kind of flip the pieces that's been frying at the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom all right eight minutes remember now i didn't remove I don't stir it every minute i didn't stir in between the time each time you saw me stirring it's the time it's the only time i stirred all right so go through look at the pieces you want a nice light golden color if it's too white, flip the white ones to the bottom and bring the golden, the ones that's frying already, to the top. All right, the stove's gauge is on four. I'm gonna let it stay for about two more minutes. The gas is finishing enough, so it's moving kind of slow. All right, eight, between 10 minutes, and you finish. This actually took 10 minutes, but generally it's eight minutes, but the gas kind of moving slow. So maybe that's why it kind of stretched for 10 minutes. A tip you see for people who buy gas, when you gas, the tip of the gas start getting red, orange like, that's when it's almost time to finish. Alright, so do as you saw me just did and remove the ex remove about 95% of the oil. You can use a spoon that scoops and remove the oil, or you can remove the oil like you saw me just did. Just use a, use a spoon to hold the fishes and remove the oil. Alright, you just want half of a quarter cup of oil in the pan. So shift the cooked fish chunks on one side and then add the um, mashed garlic and ginger along with the shredded chili pepper on the other side and allow it to saute. Put the stove's gauge on low and allow it to saute for All about right, minutes. a minute in. You see, you see I'm sorry, I'm sorry I don't have a wok, but I, I, what I like to do with these saucepan is kind of tilt the saucepan to the edge of the flame like I'm using a wok, as if I'm using a wok, and then stir fry. You see, you want the ginger and the garlic to saute somewhat so that when you serve it, it's not, it's not a raw on the fish. All right, so get ready a third cup of water a third between a quarter cup of water if you use a quarter if you use quarter cup it's it, it's okay it will just give you more gravy but don't use no more than quarter cup or a third all right so this has been about four minutes stove gauge is on four so it's been five minutes and the seasoning is sauteed you stir fry you kind of gently coat all the fish pieces with it, the cooked seasoning and then add the chopped onions and then stir fry now would be a good time to put the stove gauge on four medium low I'm sorry I don't have a wok but just use your saucepan like a wok and tilt it get your stir fry sauce stir your oyster sauce stir fry sauce and add it and then stir fry stir fry you gotta be a little bit quicker you gotta be a little 
we gotta move a little fast now because the stove's gauge is around four medium high and it's cooking just coat all the fish pieces with the stir fry oyster sauce and then add the broccoli florets and then stir fry stir lift lift stir and fry lift stir and fry all right so once you do that you add the water use the pots later or the pans later and cover it stove gauge is on four medium low let's cover your pot properly no while it's cooking the stove gauge is on floor it's gonna build up steam and create the gravy all right so it's been two minutes you just give your pot a one stir a couple stirs a few stirs Add a carrot, uh, a quarter between half teaspoon of sea salt. Just use the pot lid to cover this pan properly and allow. We're gonna cook it for one more minute and then finish. Remember now, the steam and a little bit of water that we add is gonna build the gravy, the oyster sauce gravy. Alright, after the minute. You just stir it in, stove gauge is on four, don't worry, it's not going to dry out, it's just going to build the gravy and, and coat the broccoli and the fish and the carrot with the oyster sauce. Alright, that's it, you finish, turn the stove off. That's a better, that's rice, we have in it today with white rice. Alright, best serve, same time. So before serving, just stir your pot a couple of times and take a scoop of this nice fish, broccoli, oyster sauce. And pour it on a bit of rice. So this is fish, broccoli, oyster sauce. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like, share, and we'd, we would like to hear your feedback. We would like to hear your this is feedback. fish, broccoli, oyster sauce. Look for sweet and sour fish, sweet and sour pork, sweet and sour chicken. I'm going to do a lot of Asian recipes, so look for those. So it's a fish, broccoli, oyster sauce. Alright, so I'm gonna taste this. Look how juicy this look how rich and juicy this fish in oyster sauce look. There are other sauces that you can use in you know. a visit jamaicadinners.com and I have listed the others that you can use. Alright, so the fish is juicy and delicious with oyster sauce. This meal is awesome. See my seal of approval. The carrot is rich with vitamin C. As you can see, the gravy is on the rice. fish is delicious. This is really a nice meal. You should try it. Fish is juicy and really nice. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. This is a nice meal. Onion crunchy and mildly sweet. The ginger and the garlic kind of blend really nice giving this meal a, a semi tangy taste a semi tangy a semi tangy flavor the 
Look at the gravy. This meal is one of those feel good meal, although most of my meal is. All of my meal is when you when you when you cook my type of way and eat, you feel good at the end. Your stomach is settled and calm. You don't hear anything, you don't hear no groan grumbling or anything in your stomach. Your stomach is just easy. And your body is saying thank you for feeding me this good type of food. The oyster sauce is rich and nice. The pepper is mild, mildly, mildly sauce, mildly, mildly spicy. Mildly, mild, mildly spicy. The salt in it is just right. Remember I said earlier you could use three tablespoons of oyster sauce. When you do, you could add 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 some more water. You see, you need to understand that the one third cup of water is just a guideline. You can use more, but not too much because you don't want to kill the flavor. But you can use between you can use half you can use a quarter cup between half cup of water. with the three tablespoons of oyster sauce. You see, you need to know that at the end, with adding the oyster sauce and the water is what build, is what make this meal what it is. So you can't add too much water and kill the flavor. You just wanna add just enough. And this, when, when you cover it for the three minutes and it's steam cooking, the steam is building the water. The what you just add the water because you don't want it to dry out. You don't want it to dry cook like. Alright, so you see me enjoying this meal. It's delicious. It's new and different, probably. Alright, bye. Yeah, man. Go take a look at our merchandise store. Links below. A Miguel Marvin Summers production.